Hello, this is Melanie. Welcome to the Mountaineer Woman. Today I'm making salmon cakes. I first mixed salmon, egg, water, and onion, one tablespoon of flour, and about a quarter cup of panko, and I put those in my pan, and I just now started those to frying in two tablespoons of butter and two tablespoons of oil and let that just sit there. Don't touch those cakes until they're ready to turn after five minutes under medium heat. Now I'm chopping a salad. I'm breaking the leaves of the lettuce off and I have a cucumber. I'm gonna use about one third of the cucumber. I'm just cleaning out the refrigerator, trying to use some leftover vegetables. I'm using cucumber, onion, lettuce, and tomato today. Green onions out of my garden. Here for five minutes on medium low and they're brown on the bottom and they're ready to turn. Now if you was in a big hurry or if you was making a million of these for a bunch of people, you can take them at this point, put them in the oven with a you know grease on the bottom of it and then you can bake them on the second side and they'll be perfect for a bunch of people. Just saying. Or if you're in a hurry and you have something else you wanna do, you wanna go get ready for company or whatever, you can go take a shower and put these in the oven. Okay, now I'm gonna let these cook. Potatoes still have six minutes and 44 seconds. Let me show you the cornbread. Yeah. And I'll bring you back in a minute. Okay, now I'm gonna do the pinto beans that I canned. And I just put beans in the jar, fill it with water, put it in the pressure canner, 90 minutes and they're ready to roll. Now I'm gonna wash my jar out with some water, about half a jar. to get all my yummy goodness out of there. And then, put that on the heat. And I'm gonna add a little bit of black pepper. About a half a teaspoon. Half a teaspoon of salt. Potatoes are boiling, and they're still stiff inside. Five more minutes. The cornbread's in the oven, it's browning. Now I got my pinto beans on. Now, the salmon cakes, it doesn't take them very long to brown on the second side at all. Once you flip them over, they're done in a minute or so, because that skillet is really hot. And remember, your salmon is already cooked. So by the time you cook it on that one side for five minutes, it only takes about a minute and two seconds on the other side. Now, make sure that your beans don't stick to the bottom of the pan. And I'm gonna boil these for about five minutes, maybe longer, until they start to thicken and create a real good juice up there. And I'll be back in five minutes. It's Melanie, and I'm bringing you guys along with me today while I'm cooking dinner, okay? <laughs> okay, we got salmon cakes going on here. We got potatoes boiling, getting ready to twice fry those. We've got pinto beans over here that I canned. You can use Lux beans. And I have cornbread in the oven. And I also made a delicious toss salad. Uh, just something to add a little bit of vinegar to the meal and a little raw onion. Uh, now, what I'm gonna do is, since my potatoes are almost done, 
I'm gonna remove the salmon cakes from the skillet and I'm gonna reuse this skillet. There's no sense in dirtying up another skillet when I've already got one right here I can wipe out. Now what I'm gonna do is rinse it out a little bit with hot water and then I'm gonna clean it out with a paper towel. And what that's going to do is provide me with a flat surface where the potatoes <clears throat> can brown in there. And I'm going to put in about two tablespoons of butter. Now my potatoes have continued to boil. I'm going to take those out, take my knife, and split them right down the middle. And then I'm going to lay that flat onto the butter. Now, if you don't like the skins, this would be the perfect opportunity to remove them because they're ready to take off. But we really like them and there's a lot of flavor in the skin. And right underneath the skin is where all your vitamins lay. So I'm gonna run that butter around the edge of the pan to get a little bit around all of them. And I'm going to drop in about a tablespoon and a half or two of oil just to get those frying good. Butter, salt, and pepper. Now we're just going to let these cook <clears throat> for five minutes and I'll be back. Okay, the timer just went off. Our five minutes is up. Let's look and see up underneath. Yep, beautiful. Now the potatoes were not completely cooked. If they get too cooked all the way, sometimes they fall apart. Depends on the type of potato. Now that one ain't ready to turn. That one is. Aren't those beautiful? Mm. Cornbread's almost ready. Salmon cakes. Twice cooked potatoes. Cornbread. Pinto beans and salad and green onions is all I'm talking about. Okay, out of the cabbage that we got out of the garden, I'm going to put some water on this. Uh, about a quarter of a cup. It's a little bit. A couple tablespoons. It doesn't take much. I'm going to put that on high heat, and the cabbage creates its own juice as it cooks. Let's check the taters. Yeah. Now the ones <clears throat> that were flipped to the other side, <clears throat> take them back to the other side. And look how brown the side got with the skin. That's what's delicious. And then when you fry something twice, any time you put that to the heat two times, it gets crispier every time. I'm gonna turn my pan to distribute the heat evenly. And I'm gonna let that sit there for about three minutes. And then I'm gonna turn it off. Now I'm gonna let this cabbage come to a boil. And if you look, there's hardly no water down in there at all. See, maybe by now there's a half a cup that's run down in there off of the rest of that cabbage where I washed it. And I'm just gonna let that come to a boil. And I'm gonna add One tablespoon of butter. Now I'm gonna create pink cabbage. I'm gonna pour the juice 
off of almost all the juice off of my beets in there. And I'm gonna let that cook together with some black pepper. About a half a teaspoon or so. About a half a teaspoon or three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. And then I'm gonna let that come to a boil and let that cabbage boil in that beet juice. And to that, I'm gonna add two tablespoons of white vinegar. Now the water has already been added. The beet juice has already been added. So that's what's gonna cook the cabbage. Then the cabbage creates its own juices and then we'll cook that down some concentrate the flavors. Now the beans have come to a boil and I'm going to let them simmer till they start to thicken. And yes, perfect. Now see that golden collar that got from the second time I put that on in a pan? Wow, yummy. Okay, that's done. Turn that off. Here's my cornbread. It's done. Excuse me. Now in order to keep everything warm, I'm gonna scoop my potatoes off to one side and that heat's coming out of that oven. So that'll keep all my food in that pan right there. Yummy, hot, and crispy, and delicious, because I don't put a lid. If you put a lid on that sitting there with that heat coming out, it would cause these to steam and they wouldn't be crispy anymore. They would just be like a regular potato. Now, the cabbage is starting to boil and it's gonna condense. Let's see if the cornbread's steamed off yet. goal is to get it out of there without sticking. Now I did it. Da, da, da. Now that's really good to do that on the first time after you've just seasoned your skillet. Now I'm going to set that back in the oven so it'll crisp up again on the top. Leave that for five minutes. Now the pintos are starting to cook. They're doing their thing. See how that's already getting thicker? The cabbage is doing its thing because it's condensing and boiling off some of those vinegar, beet juice, and water, and the butter just gives it a, a yummy flavor. So I'll be back in about five minutes. Okay, now I'm gonna add in the beets, now that that's cooked down some. And about a tablespoon of water to get all that beet juice out of there. Now let me taste. See if my vinegar and my sugar is strong enough. We like zip in our food. So I'm gonna go in with more vinegar. Sugar. It just happens to be what I have. And I'm gonna add some, uh-oh, red pepper flakes. About a half a teaspoon. To your liking, whatever you like. Now we've got cooked cabbage and a sweet and sour sauce. Mm. Now I'm going to make a thickening out of cornstarch. that will thicken it and all that flavor is easier to eat because now it has got a thickener in there. 
And we'll wait and see if one tablespoon was enough. And we'll go, it has to do is come to a bowl and it's ready to eat. Now this can be put in the oven and I have made it with onions and bacon in it, crumbled up fried bacon. It's awful good, but I didn't have any ready today. So I like the sweet and sour combination and I love vegetables, especially with mm, cabbage and beets. Those are the two things that I like to be sweet and sour. Maybe a hint more salt because I added the beets. <clears throat> Mm, yeah, they're thickening. Now, as this cools, I don't think I got it thick enough. As this cools, it'll get a deeper pink. And the flavor, if you have if you have any left over and you put it in the fridge, the flavor is stupendous. So it, this one's gonna take two tablespoons. One can of beets and one can of cabbage if they hadn't been fresh, I'm just saying. Yeah. Because I want it to be thick enough, kind of almost thick as a barbecue sauce. Because I want to eat it. I like to dip my potatoes in that. Try it. It's better than good. It's like a sweet and sour sauce. If you like sweet and sour sauce, give me some ideas of how you make yours in the comment section below. Ah, we're talking. See there? Just created a wonderful, thick, luscious gravy. Sweet and sour gravy. Now, as this sauce comes to a boil and thickens, then when you're ready to serve it, you know, it'll be cooling off. And as it cools, it will continue to get thicker also. But if, if you heat it back up to boiling point, it'll get runny again. But in the refrigerator, when you get it out of the fridge and eat this as leftovers, cold, it's much thicker. Now, it's creating a sauce. See? that when wiped off, it don't go away. Oh my gosh, that's good. Mm. Yummy, yummy. Ready to go, people. Turn the heat off on the cabbage and beets. Now, the beans. The beans have cooked probably, I'm gonna guess and say 10 minutes. They've been boiling and they're thick enough to serve like that. Cornbread. It's crunchy on the outside. Now the beans have thickened to a good, but they're not as thick as I need them to be. So I'm gonna put one tablespoon of flour, of corn, dissolve it, <clears throat> and that's gonna thicken my. You can do this to a big pot of beans too. You can also, if you have a big pot of beans, you can mash up some of the beans and that's what makes it get thicker. But if it's dinner and you need to eat and your beans are still too runny, put a little bit of cornstarch and water in their slurry and thicken them up a little bit. It takes about a half a cup for a whole pan of beans. I'm just saying. All right, when these cook down till they're thick enough, then dinner is served. Now these are delicious. These taters over here, I've done had me some. They're absolutely yummy and crunchy. Mm. They're or Ida potatoes, Idaho, and they make a really crunchy fried potato. Well, the beans have thickened enough. So it's dinner time, y'all. Y'all come back now, here. <laughs> 